All right, so for this video, I'll be going over all of the tier one pets for Legion so far. Uh, I've been asked to make a new updated tier one list for a while, and I have been planning on making it, but putting together a highly edited tier one list with going over the reasons why all the pets are tier one uh, takes a really long time, and I am still trying to catch up on all of my work on my other channels, I just don't really have the time right now. So I thought instead of just putting the video off, you know, until the end of the expansion, uh, I'll just do a low edited one where I just, you know, go through all of the pets and talk about all of the tier one pets in a not super highly edited video. Uh, and then I'll just do the highly edited one later if I ever get around to it because I am pretty busy and uh, pet battles is a hate to say low priority for me so in order let's just get started I'm gonna start off with all of them as uh, their types so I'm just gonna go through the list of types and rematch starting with humanoid pets so first off we've got the ore eater ore eaters are still tier 1 but they're no longer as good as they used to be but they're still good enough to keep tier 1 status it's just the types matter a lot more than they used to because it used to be they were tier one and every single breed was tier one but now some breeds are better than others i'd recommend using the ss or eater uh but you can also use the power power crusher uh, crusher and or eater are basically the same thing so i when i talk about or eater i'm talking about crusher as well uh they have like the same move set that you're going to use which is acid touch shell armor and body slam Shell armor used to only have a two, I mean, used to last for three turns. Uh, now it only lasts for two turns, so now you can't get two body slams out of it. Because the overpowered thing about it was being able to throw up shell shield and take like almost no damage for three turns while getting two body slams out of it. Uh, now you can only get one body slam out of it while taking no damage. So, it's still good, but it's not just completely broken like it used to be. Next up we've got Fiendish Imp. Uh... He's still super consistently good. He's probably in more teams than any other pet I have at 44 teams because he's just so useful and so good on so many different teams uh, to the point where I'd almost consider him like tier zero. Him and like two other, three other pets. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about which ones I think are just uh, better than all the other tier one pets. Uh, not to say he's better than all the tier one pets. He's just very useful in a lot of different teams. Uh, because he has Nether Gate, which allows him to swap out pets with a very fast 333 speed. He's almost guaranteed to go first uh, over pretty much all other pets that aren't also super speedy. Uh, Immolation to heal in the back row. He's one of two pets, I think, that are both humanoid and can use Immolation. Uh, immolation and humanoid pets combined together allows them to heal in the back row since their racial comes into play that heals them for 4% every turn. Uh, and then he just has a normal basic attack, that's not really important. It's mainly his immolation and nether gate and having a very high speed stat. Uh, plus his humanoid racial making immolation very good. He's able to constantly do damage in the back row and constantly healing. Uh, and he's able to heal for like four to 500 damage if it lasts the whole thing, which is about two basic attacks, kind of, a little bit less than that. Uh, next up, we've got the Curious Wolvar Pup. He's always been a very high Tier 2 pet, uh, even back in the day, and I could never justify putting him on the Tier 1 list because he's humanoid type. Humanoids need to be overpowered in order for them to be competitive because undeads uh, have, the best, have the best racial, and they still do. Uh, Curious Wolvar Pup, he's in, wow, 33 teams. Yeah, that should show you how good he is. Uh, he's very useful too. Not as useful as a Fiendish Imp, but he's still pretty useful. Uh, the reason I really wanted to put him in the Tier 1 list before is because of his Snap Trap. Uh, pretty much every pet that has a trap ability is Tier 1 because the ability itself is really good. It has a random chance to go off uh, once you set it out, and it lasts for 9 turns. And when it goes off... It interrupts him for the turn that it goes off since it procs on an attack or an ability. So even if they're trying to heal or like throw out a dodge or something, it'll go off. Uh, and when it goes off, it interrupts him for that turn, does as much damage as a basic attack, and then carries over to the next turn. So 
They lose two turns while taking a full damage basic attack. Plus, Kira's Wolvar Pup is a power power type, so it hurts. Uh, he also has a whirlwind ability to choose from, which is decent if you want to go for an AoE team. He has Maul to choose from, which is just a really hard hitting ability that hits even harder if he's in a bleed team. You usually just take Maul just because it hits hard, even if they're not bleeding. Uh, and then if you take Maul, you usually take Punch, that way you have some kind of type diversity, but his basic attack isn't really important. They both do the same thing, they just have different types of damage. Uh, and since undead AoE teams are not as prevalent as they used to be, you can actually use Kira's Wolvar Pup uh, without as much fear as it was in the past, where basically all of the top tier teams had nothing but undead damage, where Kira's Wolvar Pup was just not competitive enough to really break tier 1, but now that that's really toned down, he's really viable. Uh, Nubisnath Idol, in the same vein as Ore Eater and Fiendish Imp, he's also overpowered in the fact that he has like a perfect move set of abilities. Explaining why the Nubisnath Idol is good uh, actually like really takes a long time because there's just so much synergy with his abilities and his type and his stats. Basically, he has high health. Uh, he's a humanoid pet. Uh, humanoid pets really actually like to have high health since they heal up for 4% of their maximum health every turn they do damage. He's able to throw out Sandstorm, so he's able to take less damage. He has Deflection, so he's able to, uh, if you're smart enough and know what your opponent's doing, you can really screw your opponent over with some smart deflections. Uh, Sandstorm screws over a lot of teams because it makes all pets take 75 less damage. Uh, including your backline pets and your opponent's backline pets. You can't really use them in AoE teams, but he's really good against AoE teams and completely shuts down critter teams. Uh, Sandstorm is just a really good ability that's really good on Anubisath Idol because it doesn't really mess with him too much. Uh, and then Crush has a chance to hit for a lot. Uh, he used to be better when Crush had a low hit chance and just hit for a crap ton, but now Crush hits more often and can sometimes hit for a lot. Uh, it's still good. It has a random chance to hit high, and it hits high sometimes. Uh, and Nubisnath Idol, yeah, just has lots of good, good stuff going for him. Okay, so for humanoids, there's four pets. Five if you count Crusher, since him and Oreader are basically the same thing. Now, on to dragon pets. Uh, there's only one. <laughs> there's at least one pet in all of the types, uh, but some types are better, I mean, you know, just have better pets than others. So Bronze Whelpling, only the SS breed is tier 1, uh, because he has two, well, I mean three really good abilities that are able to take advantage of his speed. Uh, Crystal Prison, if you're faster than your opponent, allows you to basically get a free turn, since it'll stun them for the turn you use it, plus the next turn over. So if you go first in the round, they're stunned for that turn, and you get a free turn to attack basically on your next turn. Uh, Liftoff is better if you're faster than your opponent because you can use it uh, to proactively dodge something that you know is coming, or to mess with your opponent if you're really good at the mind games. Uh, so he has two really good abilities that are really good on pets, that are fast. And he can take Arcane Slash, which does more damage if you go first, but that's not really uh, counted in why he's tier 1. It's basically because he's a SS type with two good speed abilities on two separate tiers. Uh, and com when compared to all the other tier 1 pets, he's probably like towards the middle of the pack, kind of towards the bottom. But he's still tier 1. Okay, flying type pets. Um, We'll start off with Orphan Felbat. He's the newest addition to the flying tier 1 list. Uh, he's probably the newest pet on here who's tier 1. He has a lot of good things going well for him. He's fast uh, and a flying type pet, so he's able to basically outspeed everything. I don't think there's a pet faster than him that's used very often. Uh, so he's probably the fastest pet in the meta right now. Fastest, most used pet fastest best pet I should say uh, and the reason he's so good is Fel Immolation and Black Claw. Uh, Fel Immolation is just a standard dot it's nothing really special about it but when combined with Black Claw it all of a sudden turns it into a really high damaging ability where if your opponent swaps out 
with Black Claw and Fel Immolate, there's a really good chance they'll die in the back row. Uh, or, if not, just take a crap ton of damage. It basically forces your opponent to stay in and try to fight you. Uh, because once you have both of these out, you can only really reapply Fel Immolate, uh, which still does decent damage with Black Claw out. And he also has Drain Blood. Any kind of heal on a flying type pet is usually better than on other kinds of pets because flying type pets need to be above 50% health to keep their racial active, uh, which increases their speed by 50%. And Drain Blood is a really good heal because it does damage to your opponent, uh, only 10% of their maximum health, but it heals you for 300% of the health drained. So it's a pretty big heal even on just normal pets with like 1400 health and it's amazing on higher health pets obviously so uh, it's able to do a lot of damage outspeed pretty much everything in the meta and heal up for a ton he's just really good uh, Inky isn't tier 1 I, I must have set him as a favorite by mistake uh, Jungle Beak isn't really either oh I think I put him in here just to talk about him later uh, Fledgling Warden Owl, it's good. Uh, I definitely consider it like a really low tier 1 pet when compared to everything else. But still, you know, better than all the other pets in the game because anything in the tier 1 list is just super good. So what Warden Owl does well is it has Call Darkness Nocturnal Strike combo. Uh, and he has a really high power value at 325 power. Making him the second hardest hitting flying type nocturnal strike user in the game. There's another one uh, that can also use called Darkness and Nocturnal Strike who's also tier 1 uh, but it's like a collector's edition pet that I don't have. I'll show it to you anyway though just so you can see it. Uh, the Dread Hatchling, here it is. You need to get the Warlords of Draenor's collector edition if you want to waste money on it. It's technically a little bit stronger but I mean Warden Owl just as good. He has like, what, uh, 10 less attack power or something? Let me check. He has 325, and the Dread Hatchling has 337. So, what is that? Like, 12 more attack power? Which is pretty good. 12 more attack power. Uh, but I mean, it's really expensive if you really want to waste money on the Draenor thing. Uh... He's also tier 1 too, but I mean Warden Owl, who it's barely better than, is kind of a low tier 1 pet since all it can do is a Call Darkness Nocturnal Strike combo. If your opponent's able to deal with that, he's taken out pretty easily because he's not very good at healing. But the reason he's tier 1 is because that is still just a really good combo. It does a lot of damage. Plus, it counters a lot of the best teams in the game because a lot of the best teams heal. So having a Call Darkness out to change the weather where all pets now take 50% less healing is really good in the meta. So not only is it just a really good combo that does a ton of damage, it also is really good against meta pets, like some of the best ones. Uh, which is why he's tier 1 and uh, he's fast too. So he usually goes first. So you're almost guaranteed to get off the combo unless your opponent's able to stop it. Uh, okay, let's go back up to the other flying type pets. So we got Orphan Felbat, Fledgling Warden Owl, plus the Dread Hatchling, and plus Crows too. Uh, there are a couple of Crows that are pretty strong, but I mean, Warden Owl is stronger than them. Uh, and then we have the Tarot Claw Hatchling. Tarot Claw Hatchling is like a tier zero pet. He, I said earlier with the Fiendish Imp, that he's so good and he's so useful and in so many teams. Well, Tarot Claw Hatchling is better. Uh, he's probably the best pet in the game right now. Uh, and that's because, like a lot of tier 1 pets, he has a lot of good things going for him. Uh, first off, flying tight pet with dodge. If you're faster than your opponent, dodge is infinitely better than if you're slower because it allows you to dodge for the turn you use it plus the turn after so you get two turns of dodge out of it uh... he has nature's ward i th pretty sure terracol hatchling is the only flying type pet with a hot uh... nature's ward is a really good hot too heals you for 125 health 
every turn for five turns. And it changes your type to elemental only for damage. You're still a flying type pet. It's just you no longer take damage as if you were a flying type pet. So if they use like aquatic damage, you take more damage now. Uh, and if they're using magic damage, you no longer take extra damage because you're no longer considered a flying type pet for damage. Um, so it's not that complicated. Uh, you have a five turn hot, which is really good. You have a dodge, which is really good. Uh, and the two basic attacks are just basic attacks. They're both, an argument can be made for both of them, but I think Alpha Strike's better. Since Terror Claw is all about speed and if you're outsped, you're not really going to be doing much anyway, so you might as well take Alpha Strike since it consistently can do more damage than Claw. Since if you're faster than your opponent, uh, you do more than damage of a basic attack. So he's able to hit really hard with Alpha Strike, able to tactically dodge or just dodge on cooldown, or just dodge so that your dot will tick for two turns without taking damage. And you can just refresh Nature's Ward and then swap to the back row to heal to full, uh, or to heal above 50% health in order to come back in and dodge in the Nature's Ward again. Uh, dodge and Nature's Ward, these two abilities together make Tarot Claw Hatchling overpowered. If you were to put them both on the same row, that would definitely nerf the Tarot Claw Hatchling, but it would still probably be good because Nature's Ward is just super good. It's just also having dodge makes it better. Um, okay, and Inky, uh, Inky's a really good PvE pet. I don't know why I have him on here. I think I just forgot to remove him. And Jungle Beak is a really good Tarot Claw counter. But that's it. If your opponent just swaps out Tarot Claw and uses something else, it can probably beat it. Uh, it can use the Rain Dance Nocturnal Strike combo, which is a lot of damage if it crits, but Call Darkness Nocturnal Strike is more damage and more consistent. Uh, Jungle Beak is like a nice addition to a clone dance team. Who's a tier one combo. I have a list at the end of the video where I'll talk about tier one combos where maybe some of the pets in it aren't tier one, but when combined with another pet's ability is definitely tier one material. Okay, so that's it for the flying type pets. Got the Orphan Fellbout, uh, Fledgling Warden Owl, plus basically all high attack power called Darkness Nocturnal combo users, and the Terraclaw Hatchling. Okay, now onto Undeads. This is probably going to be the longest list, because Undeads have the best racial. Um, Wicked Soul. We have ourselves another tier zero pet here. Uh, it's really good. It's probably on the same kind of like overpoweredness of the Terraclaw Hatchling and the Fiendish Imp. It's the fastest pet in the game who can use Haunt. Uh, Haunt, all pets who can use Haunt are tier 1, because Haunt is just a really amazing ability, where it throws out a dot for 4 turns, and then counts you as dead. Now, being counted as dead is nothing but a good thing, because it allows you to get a free switch, and to take no damage on the back row, and to be considered dead for consume users. Uh... So the free switch in itself is amazing. The dot damage it does is amazing. Uh, and not taking any back row damage is really good. So all of those things just combined together make it probably the best ability in the game. Uh, and all pets who can use it are tier one, and Wicked Soul is the best one who can use it because it's super fast. Uh, and you're able to basically use it before your opponent's able to dodge it or do something else to counter it. And at 337 speed, it's actually faster than the Fiendish Imp. So it is a really nice Fiendish Imp counter. Uh, so they're both like tier zero pets. But uh, Wicked Soul could beat it. Uh, its other abilities are cool too. I mean, there can be arguments to made for all of them, but generally you'll take Shadow Shock as your basic attack. And you can take Agony. It's a decent dot, or you can take Haunting Song. It's a decent team heal. Actually, it's a really good team heal, but it's not really the strongest pet in the world, so you can go without it, but it's good if you want a team heal. Uh, but Agony is also a decent dot. So, yeah, he's basically really good because, for one, he's an undead pet, and two, he's a really fast haunt user. Okay, next up we have Widget the Departed. 
kind of hesitant to consider him tier one. If anything, he's like a really low tier one pet. Like I would consider crows and the fledgling howl. I mean owl, because uh, it can use call darkness and spectral strike, which is a lot of damage. Um, no, it's it's a lot of damage. It's also fast. 325 speed on an undead pet, that's pretty good. Uh, it allows you to outspeed a lot of things except other fast pets, and it also has pounce, which is a good ability to use if you're fast. Or you could take spirit claws, uh, but under Call Darkness, it only has a 70% chance to hit. But it does hit really hard, and it also is a pretty good option to take because uh, the meta is dominated by fast pets, so you'll probably get outsped. So Pounce will probably not be as good as it would be. But if you're going against slower pets, Pounce is the better option. So, I mean, the number one option can be either Pounce or Spirit Claws. A good argument can be made for both of them. Because at 325 speed, that's pretty fast. Uh, but it's going to get outsped by everything faster. I mean, all fast pets, basically. Uh, a condition for being a fast pet is to be faster than 325. That's like the complete baseline <clears throat> for being a super speedy pet now um but he's undead and he can use the call darkness spectral strike combo which is basically just as good as call darkness nocturnal strike combo uh the only reason it's like i'm kind of hesitant is because the flying type pets uh since they're flying type and they can use the combo they're almost guaranteed to like go first every time they use it but with Widget of Target, it's kind of iffy because he's he can get outsped by super fast pets. So, I mean, he's really good, but he's outshone by other tier 1 pets. But still, better than all the other pets. Uh, enough to kind of make the tier 1 list. Okay, now, Frostwolf Ghost Pup. Uh, this pet right here is a really good counter to other undead pets, despite also being undead. Uh, because it has a critter ability in its one slot. It's really good. Uh, it also has Haunting Song, uh, like the Wicked Soul, except unlike the Wicked Soul, the Frostwolf Ghost Pup is a power, power type, so its Haunting Song actually heals for more. Uh, and he's one of like the best team healers in the game because he can hit really hard with Scratch and Ghostly Bite, which is just a really hard-hitting single-target nuke but stuns you for a round, which isn't really a big deal if you use it and then just swap out. Or if you use it during your turn of immunity, uh, but then you're doing 25% less damage. Or if you're using it to secure a kill. There are lots of tactical ways to use Ghostly Bite with its stun not being a huge issue. Uh, and Haunting Song is a really good team heal, and Scratch allows it to counter other undead pets, uh, which are very prevalent in the meta, uh, because he himself is undead, so he also gains advantage of the overpowered racial of coming back for a turn. Okay, now, the ghostly kid, the ghastly kid, uh, he has haunt, so he's tier 1 automatically. He also has other pretty neat abilities, he has hoof, it's a critter type basic attack, so he can counter other undead pets like the frostwolf ghost pup, uh, and he can take consume magic to clear dots and heal for a little bit, or ethereal to tactically dodge abilities. Both are good, so you can take either or. I prefer Ethereal, though, and I usually go for Hoof, because there's lots of undead pets. And always Haunt, because it's one of the best abilities in the game, if not the best. Uh, Bone Serpent. Okay. With Bone Serpent, we now have the last Tier 0 pet. It's ridiculously good on the same, or some people might even argue it's the best pet in the game. I wouldn't say that. I'd say it's probably Tarot Claw Hatchling. Uh, but I mean, he's still really high up there. The reason for that being, uh, Terra Claw, not Terra Claw, the Bone Serpent is the strongest pet in the game who can use the Call Darkness Nocturnal Strike combo. Uh, and he's also undead, which makes him better because the undead racial is better than the flying racial, and he also hits very hard with it. Unlike Widget Departed, who's able to use a similar combo, but doesn't really have a very high attack power stat. The fact that he's undead makes it a lot better. But the fact that the Bone Serpent's able to do the combo as well, um, 
and is ridiculously strong. All of the breeds have like a really high attack power value. All of the breeds are good, uh, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, but the power speed breed has more attack power than a full power power type pet. Of course, cases and arguments could be made for all of the other breeds, but they're all good. It doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, some of them can be better than others in certain situations, though. So, with Call Darkness Nocturnal Strike, he's able to do a crap ton of damage with his undead racial. Uh, he's guaranteed to put out the crap ton of damage. And it has Bone Barrage. So, while Witch of the Departed and Crows, uh, like, they're good, but they can be countered, Bone Serpent, since it has Bone Barrage, is able to take out like its natural counter uh, the decoy or bubble abilities because bone barrage is a multi-hit ability which will hit three times and then put a dot on them for four turns which all eat up shots of decoys or bubbles because one of the best ways to stop a call darkness nocturnal strike combo is to just block it or avoid it and the bone serpent can get rid of one of those blocks while the other ones can't and they just kind of have to attack it for two turns and lose those turns of damage. Bone Serpent can just naturally counter those as well while also just hitting ridiculously hard and having the best racial in the game. Bone Serpents are really good. You can just make a full team of Bone Serpents and probably beat pretty much anything. Uh, plus, you know, Darkness just naturally counters a lot of the healing teams that are in the meta as well. He just has a lot of things going well for him. Uh, Son of Seath, he's good. He's one of the only pets in the game that has a heal on all three slots. Uh, it has an overinflated attack power value for being a mixed breed uh, power speed. Uh, this is not a power speed bread. He's way too slow for those kinds of stats. Uh, so he has drained blood. Like I mentioned, the orphan fell back. It's a really good heal. Uh, Touch of Animus, another really good heal if you're able to actually hit your opponent with it. And combos well with a lot of other pets. And he can just take Absorb or Plagued Blood. Plagued Blood is like a lesser version of Touch of Animus, but it doesn't have a cooldown. And lasts for five turns. And Absorb, it's just you heal for the damage you do. And it usually does about half the damage of a basic attack. So, uh, Sun of Seath is just able to survive like crazy against a lot of pets. Uh, and also hits really hard while doing all that and is undead has the best racial okay now blight breath um I'm actually not too sure about this one he's good but when compared to other tier 1 pets I don't think he's really that good uh, but he is nice in some certain teams so what he has here going well for him is acid rain and dreadful breath combo Acid Rain is an AoE weather ability, uh, which buffs aquatic type moves. Dreadful Breath, despite being a humanoid ability, does extra rain. <laughs> I mean, does extra damage if the weather is cleansing rain, which he can throw out. Uh, Blight Breath is like one of three pets that can use both the weather effect, cleansing weather, and Dreadful Breath. Uh, they're, of the other two pets who can do it, he's the only one that's undead, you know, giving him the best racial, which is great. Uh, he doesn't actually hit as hard as some of the other ones, though. His hardest hitting breed is only at 297, which is good enough. He also has pretty high health, which is neat on a undead pet. Uh, and then its other slot, Toxic Smoke, actually only lasts one turn less under Acid Rain. And sleeping gas isn't very good unless you're able to weave it in. So he only really has Dreadful Breath Acid Raid combo going well for it. Uh, plus, you know, it's racial. Uh, Unborn Valk has the haunt ability, so it's automatically tier 1. Uh, it used to be the only pet with the haunt ability before Ghastly Kid and Wicked Soul were added. It can also use Curse of Doom, so it's able to throw out two hard hitting dots. And then usually just attack with Shadow Shock. You can also take Unholy Incension instead of Haunt if you want to trick your opponent and think, oh, well, I thought they were going to use the Overpowered ability. Instead, they're using the Mediocre ability, Unholy Ascension. If you're able to trick your opponent and take advantage of the damage increase, it's neat. 
Usually Han's better. Uh, I don't think I really need to go over why Han's good again. Okay, and then two more. We Bombination. It was nerfed after Warlords of Draenor, but only to like reasonable levels. It used to be Cleave was just straight up overpowered. It did more damage than other basic attacks uh, like of the same type. But now it does as much damage as a basic attack should do for someone with only 260 power. Uh, kind of like Disease Bite, but that one's kind of a random chance one. So Cleave, it's the only non-cooldown based AoE in the game that hits all your opponent's targets and splits the damage evenly, just like Dreadful Breath. Uh, but AoE teams aren't as popular as they used to be since they nerfed a lot of the AoE damage. Uh, so he's not used as much as he used to be, but he's still really good in some teams that are able to uh, to effectively use AoE uh, because it's also a really high health pet with consumed corpse. So he's a really good cleanup pet on an AoE team uh, since its AoE doesn't rely on your opponent having all three pets alive since it splits the damage no matter what. Uh, and its last two options both suck. So he's only really here for Consumed Corpse and Cleave and having a high health pool for Consumed Corpse to be very good. Okay, and finally, man, there are a lot of Tier 1 Undead Pets. Uh, the Spirit Crab, he's still pretty good. He's just not used as often because, I mean, look at all these other Tier 1 Undead Pets. If you're going to use an Undead Pet on your team, you really don't want to double down on it because you want some kind of type diversity otherwise you'll be completely destroyed if your opponent has you know too much critter damage uh, that being said spirit crab can actually counter critters because it has shell shield a lot of critter type pets have like multi-turn abilities or dots uh, so shell shield almost completely counters that they'll still take damage but they're gonna take uh, like enough less damage where your opponent probably won't want to use any multi-target moves on you even if it's critter type it also has snap so it hits hard against critters uh, and it can also take whirlpool or surge uh, instead of snap so it can also just have a basic attack that just hits normally hard because he has a decent attack power at 292 or you can take surge to outspeed pets uh, surge is actually pretty good against the meta where there's tons of speedy pets you rely on going first so having both of these ability and shell shield is decent. He can also, you know, take whirlpool just to do a crap ton of damage with whirlpool and snaps. You know, just use whirlpool off cooldown, or you can just take rot instead of shell shield since rot hits a little bit harder than a sh uh, a normal basic attack. If you want, I I'd, I'd recommend shell shield, but rot can be taken as well. And uh, to top it all off, it has an incredibly high health pool at almost 1900 that's like one of the highest health pulls in the game uh, of like pets that aren't just garbage uh, most pets with high health only go up to around 1700 and his is close to 1900 so he's pretty survivable he also has a lot of attack power for a high health pet we abomination is like super weak in comparison to him and spirit crab has more health than him and more attack power uh, and has a good moveset and, you know, has the overpowered undead racial. All those things are still really good on him. It's just, you know, he's just like a super solid all-arounder pet, while all the other pets on this list are, like, really good at one specific thing. If you want an all-arounder, Spirit Crab is a nice addition to your team. Uh, since he doesn't really counteract with a lot of teams. So how many undead pets are on this list? Let's see. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten tier one undead pets. Yeah, there is not going to be any other type that has that many undead racial. All right, on to critters. Now, critters, uh, rabbits. All SS rabbits are tier one and. Pretty much all rabbits, even like special event rabbits, are able to take the same move set. In order for a rabbit to be tier one, they need flurry, dodge, and burrow. Uh, flurry is the only multi-hit move in the game, which is able to take out decoys and bubbles, which makes it better than all other multi-turn moves. Uh, dodge on fast pets 
uh, is better than on non-fast pets because you get one extra turn out of it. And burrow, like liftoff, is better on fast pets because you can use it tactically to avoid abilities first in the round. You can also just use it to not take damage for a turn while dodge comes off cooldown. Uh, so that's one turn in which you're not taking any damage and one turn in which dodge, you know, is coming off cooldown. <laughs> I don't think I really need to explain that. <coughs> Uh, Darkmoon Rabbit's on here, uh, even though it doesn't actually have Flurry. It's it's really good in Bleed Teams. It doesn't have Flurry though, he's not tier 1, I just have him on here because he's basically a rabbit just with a, a dot instead of Flurry, but Flurry is a big part of why rabbits are tier 1. Uh, Dust Bunny, I just have him on here because he's basically a rabbit as long as you take the moveset, Flurry, Dodge, and Burrow. Noble Garden Bunny, same thing. He has... Oh wait, Noble Garden Bunny is actually a little bit slower than a rabbit. Huh. Never noticed that, but he has a little bit more attack power as well. I might actually be try using this more often, because usually the 357 speed is more than enough to outspeed pretty much everything. I think I might be trying the Noble Garden Bunny from now on when I use rabbits. I didn't know he was slower and had a little bit more attack power. Uh, at 341 speed, that's still ridiculously fast. It's still good enough to just take Flurry, Dodge, and Burrow. Uh, you can basically just ignore the other flavor abilities they have. Okay, so that's bunnies out of the way. I'm just going to put them all under like one. All bunnies that are SS are tier one. As long as they're able to take Flurry, Dodge, and Burrow. Uh, next up, we've got the Sneaky Marmot. This is one of the newer additions to the tier one list. Uh, the SS breed, pretty fast, 341 speed, has Blinding Powder, which is a better Blinding Poison because it has a one turn less cooldown on it. It only has a three turn cooldown. If you're faster than your opponent, uh, you put up the debuff for 100% reduced hit chance, and it lasts that turn plus the next turn after, and then you only have to wait two more turns before you can use it again. So your opponent's blind like a third of the time because of its short cooldown. Uh, and that's the reason Blinding Poison got nerfed in the past because it was too overpowered with the... Actually, I'll talk about that pet later. D just to say Blinding Powder is really overpowered right now on the Sneaky Marmot because he's the fastest pet in the game. Uh, he's the fastest pet who can use it. Actually, that's not true. There's flying type pets that use it, but they're useless because they have garbage abilities. He actually has decent abilities to round it off. It can also take burrow. Uh, like I said, with lift off and the bunny burrows, you can use it to basically not take damage for a turn while blinding powder comes off cooldown. Uh, I guess smoke bomb can be used the same way, but I'd highly recommend burrow because it also does a lot of damage. And for its one slot, I mean, both of the basic attacks are okay. If it had Flurry, uh, Sneaky Marmot would probably be better than Rabbits and might even be tier zero. That's how good Flurry is. But since it doesn't and it just has two normal basic attacks, he's just tier one. Still super good, but he could have been even better if he just had uh, Flurry instead of Chomp. Okay, now we have the Prairie Mouse. The Prairie Mouse is the only rat in game that has Poison Fang and Flurry on two separate options. All the other rats in the game, for some reason, have like Flurry and Poison Fang on the same option where you have to take either or, you can't take both. Having them on two separate ones allows you to take Flurry, which is, like I explained earlier, the rabbit's just a really good ability that can break decoys. Uh, Poison Fang is a decent dot. There's nothing really special about it except the fact that it does extra damage to uh, mechanical type pets. And since it can both take out decoy uh, and then do a crap ton of damage to mechanical pets, which are like the number one pet that uses decoy, he's a really good decoy counter. Plus, Flourish is really good against undead pets. And like I showed earlier, there's 10 tier one undead pets. So you see those a lot. So that's really good and also has survival which allows it to basically go on for two more turns after it should die if you're faster than your opponent since when you use survival for one turn 
you just cannot die. So if you use that and you go first in the round, uh, well, I mean, I guess you can just go into the next turn and just attack him and then swap him out and he'll have like one health. And as long as your opponent doesn't have an AoE, you can actually bring him back in and use survival again to survive for another turn. Uh, and it basically gives you a pseudo undead racial. It's a good move because it gives you uh, kind of the undead racial. You still have to use a turn to use it. Uh, that just shows how good the undead racial is. That an ability that kind of simulates it is considered good on a fast pet. Uh, but even with all that, he's just a really good meta counter. On his own against like other non-meta pets, he's just okay. Decent, but good enough meta counter to be tier 1. Uh, that's why a lot of the critters are tier 1, honestly, is because they're meta counters. Because there's just so many undead pets that are good. Okay, now for the magic type pets, there's two-ish. I'm kind of hesitant to put Servant of Demidas on here, but at first I'll talk about Hydro Wisp. Hydro Wisp, for sure, is a tier one pet. Uh, it's a fast pet who can use dodge. Fast pets that can use dodge are pretty good. If it can also do something else, that makes him amazing, and he can. He can also use Wish. Wish is like one of the best heals in the game. It just heals whoever it hits for 50% of their maximum health. Uh, and since it takes a turn before the effect actually goes off, you can just swap into another pet and heal them instead. So it's a really nice, you know, heal your other pets kind of pet. But it can also just heal itself and dodge, so it's pretty survivable. Uh, and it can use Arcane Blast, which is a ramp up ability. And since it's such a survivable kind of pet who can dodge and then wish heal, uh, you are easily going to be able to ramp it up to full damage and just start hitting really hard. Hydro West, super good. Servant of Demidas. Um, like I said, I'm kind of hesitant to put him on here. He's a definitely a really good pet, but he's like the definition of a glass cannon. He'd be so much better if... He was like undead or mechanical, you know, had a good racial, but he has the magic type racial kind of one of the worst. But since he has like so little health, having the magic racial is not half bad since the magic racial means they can't be hit for more than 35% of their maximum health uh, in one attack. So he can't be one shot, but a lot of the pets in the meta use like dots or multi-turn moves so he's kind of useless against them but you know against like everything else he does amazing because he has an incredibly high attack power value at 366 like one of the highest in the game and he has three abilities that take advantage of the attack power soul rush is just a really hard hitting single target nuke with a 25 percent chance to stun uh siphon anima is basically a, a basic attack which also heals you for the damage it does and since he has a super high attack power value it just hits harder than a normal pet's basic attack and also will heal him for quite a bit uh, giving him some nice healing actually if you're able to use it smartly and then magic sword it's probably one of the best basic attacks in the game in that it does a basic attacks worth of damage uh, maybe a little bit less but since Servant of Demidas has so much attack power, it still hits harder than a normal basic attack, with the added effect of having a 50% increased chance to crit. So, the baseline crit chance is 5%, so you have a 55% chance to crit when you use Magic Sword, and that's just your basic attack, so. Uh, he has a chance to hit for 50% more damage every time you use it. Or if it doesn't, it just hits for a normal basic attack's worth of damage when considering other pets. Uh, a pet with his attack power value should hit harder. Siphon Anima is actually how much he should be hitting for the basic attack. But I mean, he hits so hard that even if it doesn't crit, it still hits hard. But he's just a super hard hitting pet with good abilities that take advantage of his attack power. But a lot of the pets in the meta use multi-turn moves and dots, and they're kind of able to take him out. But if you're smart with him, he's good, and he's also just really good against like non-tier pets, <laughs> uh, which is 
good enough to make him like a low tier one pet. Alec Plushy isn't on the list. I just have him because I like to use him on gimmicky teams. He's not half bad if paired up with very cooldown reliant pets, since he's the only pet in the game with a, a free switch. With no cooldown, I should say. But he can't attack. He just has like, the highest health pool in the game. Um, okay. Elemental pets. There's only four of them when compared to only two magic type pets and I'm kind of iffy on the Servant of Demidas. So the elemental pets. First we've got the Blossoming Ancient. I should probably talk about the Blossoming Ancient and the Singing Sunflower together since they're both basically on here for the same reason. Uh, they're one of the only two pets in the game that can use both sunlight and photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis does double healing under sunlight. Sunlight um, increases healing by 25%. So it does double healing plus 25% and it's a five turn hot. Uh, so they can basically just stay in and attack as much as they want and then swap out and then heal to full. Like no matter what. Uh, Singing Sunflower can do the same thing. You can just stay in, maybe use Solar Beam, take a crap ton of damage, and just refresh Photosynthesis, and then swap out. Basically, just having Singing Sunflower and Blossoming Ancient on the same team, you can just have them come in, attack a little bit, Photosynthesis, and then just swap out and heal back to full. It's so much healing that it's kind of overpowered. Uh, there's also another pet in the game called Brute, who's a Druid Order Hall pet with like the same moveset to the Blossoming Ancient, so everything I say for the Blossoming Ancient also applies for Brute. I just don't have them. Um, Magma Rageling and Little Ragnaros. They're kind of tier one for the same reason. Uh, they both have Magma Trap. Magma Trap is exactly like the Curious Wolvar Pups uh, Snap Trap ability. In that, you put it out, and it has a random chance to go off. And when it goes off, it interrupts him for that turn and stuns him, and it carries over to the next turn and does as much damage as a basic attack. And both the Magma Rageling and Ligna Ragnaros uh, are power power types. Uh, and Magma Rageling has more power than the average power power type, which makes it even better. And Little Ragnaros has the highest attack power value of all pets, which makes his even better. <laughs> Uh, Magma Trap is like the reason they're on here. It is just a really good ability. Even if it is luck dependent. The ability is so good that it's kind of worth aiming for the luck. Uh, and Magma Rageling <coughs> sorry, also has Flame Jet. It's a nice single target nuke that has a 50% chance to also dot him up. Uh, it can also take Flamethrower which is a decent basic attack. It can use Magma Wave to destroy Magma Trap early, which will, for some reason, it makes it do the damage and the stun as well. But unless you're going first, uh, it's not going to interrupt them for two turns like it would be if you just let it go off on its own. But you can manually activate it yourself with Magma Wave. Uh, Little Ragnaros can do the same thing. You can also manually activate Magma Wave if you want. And you can also take Flamethrower to have a basic attack instead of being reliant on cooldowns. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend just taking Flamethrower and not trying to break it on your own. Uh, Little Ragnaros also has other combos he can use besides Magma Trap. He can also use Flamethrower and Conflagrate. Uh, having the highest attack power value in the game means that's enough to kill a, lot, a low health pet. It's a lot of damage. Uh, he can also just take Magma Trap and then Sons of the Flame, which is a good dodge ability. And usually, best bet is to go with Sulphur Smash, uh, because having the highest attack power value in the game, his basic attack hits about as hard as other pets' cooldown-based abilities. He's a really hard hitter, and he has an overpowered ability, which makes him tier 1. Um, so, for elemental pets, we've got four pets. Five, if you count Brute. But Brute is basically just Blossoming Ancient. It's just a clone of him. Okay, now we've got beast type pets. There's only four of them. Uh, Death Adder Hatchling and Rose Tapian are literally the exact same pet with just like one different move. 
Uh, but they always use the same moveset. They have the same stats. You want to use the SS breed for both of them. The only difference is Rose Tapian is a lot easier to get since it's just a wild caught pet. Uh, Death Hatter Hatchling has the Blinding Poison Puncture Wound combo. Blinding Poison uh, reduces their chance to hit by 100% for one round on a four turn cooldown. It used to have a three turn cooldown like the Sneaky Marmot's Blinding Powder, but that was overpowered, so they nerfed it. But Blinding Powder is still at three turns, <laughs> so. The Blinding Power is actually better than the Death Adder Hatchling's uh, Blinding Poison. But, unlike the Blinding Powder, Blinding Poison will count the target as both blinded and poisoned. Uh, which means you can use Puncture Wound, which does double damage if they're poisoned. If not, it just hits as hard as a basic attack. You can also use Poison Fang. Uh, usually your opponent has lots of switches, so smart uses of Poison Fang can sometimes get dots on multiple pets. Otherwise, you're stuck with spamming Poison Fang once your two cooldowns are done. Uh, and also, Puncture Wound used to have a three turn cooldown as well, but they nerfed that because that was also strong. Death Adder Hatchlings used to be tier one, and then they nerfed them, and now they're not. Instead, I mean, and then they nerfed them, and then they're still tier one. They're just not tier zero like they used to be. Rose Tapian is the exact same Poison Fang, Puncture Wound, Blinding Poison, same speed, same attack power, same health, just a different skin and easier to get. Uh, the Alpine Foxling. He's a really good support pet who's also really good on his own and really good on basically any team he's on because the SS breed with Dazzling Dance can actually outspeed the Terra Claw Hatchling uh, which gives him a huge advantage over him. Dazzling Dance also buffs your entire team so your whole team just has 25% more speed and speed is really good in pet battles and a lot of the top tier pets rely on their speed so giving all of your pets a speed bonus against them can really screw up a lot of strategies uh, it can also use flurry which is good against undead pets and breaks decoys which is amazing uh, and it can also crouch which is really good on beast type pets because they do 25 percent more damage when they're below 50 percent health so if you crouch when you're near 50% health, you'll be able to safely stay under that without dying longer and be able to attack for more damage. Uh, so the SS breed of this, I think it's the fastest Dazzling Dance user, who also, you know, has Flurry. It's just really good. Uh, Vengeful Porcupet. Vengeful Porcupet's tier one. Uh, it is a really good cleanup pet, and it's kind of hard to use. Like, look at him, he's in 25 of my teams. If I need a cleanup pet, uh, I'll usually just throw on the Ventral Porky Pet because he's rarely bad. Uh, he's really good against undead pets because he has flank. Uh, it can power ball until it's faster than any pet. And spirit spikes. If you're faster than your opponent and you go first, you apply it for one turn. And what it does is it reduces damage by up to 150, which is neat. That's like half of a basic attack. But if you do take damage through Spirit Spikes, your opponent will take damage equal to a basic attack. So it's like a reflective shield. Uh, if you're able to use it first, not only will you take less damage, but you're also doing damage to your opponent fully. So it's a defensive, offensive move, and it's a really good one at that. Uh, and if you're faster than your opponent, you get it for two turns. The turn you use it, plus the turn after. So your opponent will usually just not attack you to not take the damage. Or if they do, you take reduced damage. It's win-win for you. They don't attack you, you get attack them with Impugny for a turn. Uh, and in order to get faster than your opponent, you can just Power Ball. Power Ball will increase your speed by 20% every time you use it. And the speed boost is permanent. So even if you swap out, you'll keep the speed boost. Uh, and then you can just use Flank. It does extra damage if you're faster than your opponent. Good stuff. Lots of good combos. And pretty decently high health. So he's able to survive for a long time under 50% health, so he's able to hit hard thanks to Spirit Spikes, uh, you know, allowing him to survive under 50% health and being able to flank with that. Okay, so for undead pets, I mean not undead pets, for beast type pets, we have four, with the new additions being Rose Tapian and the Alpine Foxling. Alright, on to the last two types. 
Next up, we've got aquatic type pets. First off, the Hydroling. He used to be a lot better back in the day when shell armor was still overpowered. But now he's just good. Uh, he can still use shell armor, which is still really good. Uh, aquatic type pets have a really good place in the meta since they take less damage from undeads, which is like one of the most common pets. Uh, and shell armor, being an aquatic type pet and just having an overpowered ability, just makes it pretty good. It can also use call lightning, which is a nice ability, and you know, a basic attack. It's basically on here for a shell armor, but it does have a variety of abilities to take in addition to having shell armor. Purple Puffer, uh, a new addition to the tier 1 list. He's like a lesser Emperor Crab, uh, but he can be better in some situations. It's really neat. Uh, Purple Puffer is a really hard to get pet since it's a trading card game pet. But it has a lot of attack power. It's a power power type. It's not as strong as the Emperor Crab, but it can do something the Emperor Crab can't. And that's take Surge and a hard hitting ability. So Surge is a really good move because it always goes first. And I'm not 100% sure on this, uh, but I'm pretty sure Surge is the fastest ability in the game. So even if your opponent uses another priority move like Quick Attack or something, Surge will still go first. I think. I'm not 100% sure on this. It's just I was testing it yesterday, and I didn't test it very thoroughly, but Surge seemed to be beating out a lot of Quick-type abilities. So it's super fast, but I mean, it's really rare that you go against another pet who also has a priority move. <laughs> Whoever has a priority move is going to go first. And Surge is pretty good on high attack power pets. Uh, it also has Healing Wave, which is good on a high uh, attack power pets. Uh, since having higher attack power makes it heal for a lot more. And it heals for about two basic attacks worth of damage, which means it's worth using it on cooldown, basically. Uh, it can also take Spike Skin, which is also good on him, because usually you use your aquatic type pet to take dots. And if you take Spike Skin, you just won't take dot damage. Uh, but also, if your opponent's smart, they won't use their dots on you, so having Healing Wave is just as good. And it has Pump. Uh, you can just use Pump and have it ready to go, because it'll also give you 10% more damage while it's set. Because you use it once, you have 10% damage buff, and the next time you use it, it'll throw out a huge ability, which does two basic attacks worth of damage. You know, plus 10%. So it's actually better than hitting twice with two basic attacks. I think, I actually, now that I think about it, uh, two water jets might hit harder. Because that's six, almost 700. Nope, pump hits harder than two, than two water jets. Uh, so yeah, it is actually stronger to use one pump than it is to use two basic attacks. Since it takes two turns to use a pump. And the good thing about it is you have, you know, a nice heal. You have the great aquatic type to counter undeads. You can also have the priority move to outspeed all of the speedy pets in the meta. And if you don't need to outspeed them or if they're dodging for a turn, you can just set up pump tactically and use that to also just hard hit. So he's able to hit fast and hit hard and heal for a lot. Uh, he's a great addition to the tier one list. And yeah. Uh, Magical Crawdad, this pet right here, I think he's the highest pet in the highest health pet in the game who can use Wish. Wish, like I mentioned earlier with the Hydro Wisp, it's the best heal in the game. It heals the next pet in the round for 50% of their maximum health. And if he just uses it on himself, he heals for a crap ton because he almost has 1900 health, just like the Spirit Crab. Really high health value. Uh, it can also take Shell Shield to just not take dot damage, since it's also aquatic type. Uh, or it can take Renewed Mist for even more healing. Arguments can be made for both of them. I personally prefer Shell Shield. And it has Surge and Snap. Surge, a priority move. He doesn't have a lot of attack power, so Surge isn't as effective on him as it would be on Purple Puffer. But it's still decent. Or you can just take Snap to do basic attack damages. 
Uh, the good thing about Magical Crawdad is usually there to just like survive like crazy and then slowly whittle down your opponent with either Surge or Snap while just taking no damage and then healing up all that damage with Wish. Or he's just a really good team healer to heal up your other pets. Uh, he's a really good addition to pretty much any team that doesn't use Darkness. And Emperor Crab, uh, he's the granddaddy of countering undead pets because he has Healing Wave and Shell Shield on two separate tiers. Uh, Shell Shield, when he throws it up, he no longer takes dot damage. He also takes almost no damage from multi-turn moves just in general. He can pretty much just completely shut down dots and multi-turn moves, which there are a lot of in the meta. Uh, he also just takes less damage from undead pets, which there are a lot in the meta. Uh, it has a whole... <laughs> I don't know what I was saying there. It has an over-inflated attack power value at 357. Really high. Uh, Purple Puffer is strong at 325, and Ember Crab is like 25. Uh, actually, it's almost closer to 30 points higher, which is great, which means its healing wave heals for more. It heals for about two basic attacks. Huh. That's only 565, and this one is 517. It heals for about 50 more. It's it's still really good. And uh, you can take either Surge or Snap. They're both good on the Emperor Crab. Uh, Surge hits almost as... No, it does, actually. It hits as hard as a standard basic attack on the Emperor Crab because he has an overinflated attack power value. And you have priority, so you always go first. Uh, and it's really good against a lot of you know, fast pets in the meta. Snap, with his overinflated attack power value, kind of has a little Ragnarok situation where just using his basic attack is like using a hard hitting ability from another pet. Uh, you can just use that to pretty much kill anything, and it's also really good against critters, which are pretty prevalent in the meta, and it just hits hard against pretty much everything else. But a case can be made for both of them. Both of its one slots are really good. And I honestly have a hard time deciding which one to use whenever I'm trying to use it. But its other two abilities are pretty straightforward. You use Healing Wave or Shell Shield. Unless you're using a very specific comp which calls for using Whirlpool instead. Or if you just, you know, know your opponent's not going to use Undead, I mean, Dots on you anyway. You can just take Whirlpool for more damage, because uh, it hits hard. And I, I guess arguments could be made for either Whirlpool or Shell Shield now that I'm thinking about it. I have a specific team that I use Whirlpool on with it, and it's really good, but that's a very specific team. It's not like a general Emperor Crab that I use. As you can see, I have him on 30 teams. Uh, he is just a wonderful addition as like a third pet to any team that you're building. If you're building a team and you're like, I really just need a third pet to round off this team, uh, Emperor Crab is a wonderful choice. So, just like the Vengeful Porky Pet, he's just a really good team to throw on teams that need a third pet. Something to clean up for him, or something to just counter the meta. Uh, Emperor Crab, yeah, he's just like the ultimate meta counter, who's also just good against everything else. Uh, he's not in the case where he's only good against, you know, the meta, like the Jungle Bee Catchling, but not very good against everything else. He's just good against everything. You know, except other Emperor Crabs or Flying Type Pets. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, actually I should probably say, what was it? There's one, two, three, four Aquatic Type Pets that are Tier 1. And I'm kind of iffy on Hydra Lane now. But definitely Purple Puffer, Magical Crowded, Emperor Crab. Hydra Lane 2, kind of, but the other three are better, I think. Ever since they nerfed Shell Armor, which is still a good ability. Okay, now we've got Mechanical Pets. Only two? Uh, that is a step up. It used to be just Mechanical Pandaren Dragon Lane. Uh, this is actually kind of a tough thing because the Mechanical Racial is really good. It's the second best racial in the game. It's just there aren't too many overpowered Mechanical Pets. Blizzard does a really good job of balancing them to some degree. So it's kind of hard for some of them to really stand out above the rest because 
pretty much all of the mechanical type pets are just solid pets that are just good but none of them like overpowered good to be tier one you know except these two and i'll explain why uh mpd the mechanical pandaren dragon lane he's been like tier one since day one he keeps getting changed a lot and he's always survives his nerfs to just stay a very relevant pet uh he's in 31 of my teams he's also in the same realm of the emperor crab eventual porky pet and the fiendish imp and that he's just a really good third option if you need a pet to throw on a team to just round it off mpd you can't really go wrong with him he just combos too well with lots of teams uh the mpd also has a distinction of just being a really good pve pet not all good pvp pets are good pve pets uh most undead pets aren't very good pve pets but they're like the best pets in pvp that's a really good example and mpd is a really good pve pet because he is a double counter to magic type pets uh being engineering type <laughs> oh shit that's not what he is being a mechanical type there we go he takes less damage from magic type abilities and he has breath, which does extra damage to mechanical type abilities. Uh, there are very few tier one pets that are double counters to certain types of pets. Uh, actually, there's just very few pets in general that are double counters. Uh, but mechanical Pandaren Dragon Lane is one of them, with breath and being mechanical type. Uh, Flyby is a garbage ability. Don't ever take it. Uh, its other two abilities. Thunderpult is a really good AoE ability. So if you have an AoE team, he's a really good choice to put on it. Because uh, Thunderbolt does decent split damage. If he's the last pet alive, it's just a good single target nuke. Uh, so it's always live. You can always use Thunderbolt. Uh, and then has Decoy. It's a decently fast pet who can use Decoy. So you can use it to tactically dodge slow pets. Uh, you know, to like block a really hard hitting ability or something. Decoy is just a good ability on its own. Uh, if you use decoy, it automatically just has value for being what it is. It's just a really good ability, kind of like uh, Haunt, where all pets who have it are good because the ability itself is good. But decoy isn't really overpowered like Haunt, so not all pets who can use decoy are automatically tier one. But all pets who have decoy, I I think twice about when I like hmm should this be a tier one pet because it has decoy eh eh not really its other abilities are kind of meh the MPD though he's a double counter which makes him really good but he also has Thunderbolt which is uh, a very versatile ability that's good in a lot of different situations and that's why he's tier one he's survived being tier one for so long <laughs> he's like one of the few pets who's been tier one since Mista Pandaria when pet battles were introduced uh, and back then it was basically just because he was the only decoy pet <laughs> uh, and then he just kind of keeps surviving on the tier one list so he's used a lot he's been used often and he's a very common pet in PvP because he's been tier one for so long and that's why people probably like have a higher perception of being of mechanical pets being used more often than they really are because mechanical panda and dragon lane is used so often uh it's like one of the only ones and then we have alarmal bot finally another tier one mechanical type pet he's a new addition added in legion um the reason alarmal bot is tier one is because one it has decoy like i said whenever a pet has decoy i always think is this going to be a tier one pet i really hope its other abilities are up to par uh and it has an ability right here called alert which is literally an overpowered basic attack it does more damage than it should for someone with a really low attack power value of 244. uh alert should only hit for about uh 240 damage but instead it hits for almost 280 which means it's overvalued uh it has an overpowered basic attack which is neat uh it also does its damage in three bursts so it can break other teams decoys which is neat 
<laughs> I should stop saying neat. It's a multi-turn move, kind of like Flurry. It has all the advantages of Flurry of breaking multi-turn move abilities, uh, which is great. You can also take Batter if you want, uh, if you're able to reliably get some kind of speed increase. Its second abilities... Oh, this is actually a really nice thing right here. Interrupting Jolt hits just as hard as a basic attack. And it does 264 damage, and Alert does 277 damage, with like no downsides to it. It's literally overpowered. Uh, Interrupting Jolt does how much damage Alert should do. Interrupting Jolt is a good ability on fast pets, because it does as much damage as a basic attack, and will interrupt if you go first. Uh, and interrupt means you get to hit them while they don't get you hit you. So if you're able to go first on it, it's great. It's even better because most interrupt abilities do less damage than a basic attack, and Interrupting Jolt doesn't. It just hits as hard as he would normally. Uh, and at 276 speed, he's not fast, but he is faster than slow pets. So you can take Interrupting Jolt and sometimes get it off because not all pets in the meta are super fast. It's just a lot of the best ones are. Uh, but there are also a ton of good pets that are slow, in which Interrupting Jolt would totally come into play. Or if you have one on a team with a Dazzling Dance, it's even better, because he's already good without having to be faster than his opponent. You can also take Haywire, which is just him doing more damage in a basic attack for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. It's definitely viable. Uh, you can take either one of them. They're both good. Uh, I'd prefer Interrupting Jolt, but a case can be made for Haywire as well. And honestly, a case can be made for warning as well, because that's a good ability. It's just it's not, you know, super good like Decoy is. The reason a lot robots tier 1 is because it's a mechanical pet. That's a really good racial. Uh, it has Decoy, which is a good ability. And it has an overpowered basic attack. All the other Decoy users have normal basic attacks. And he also has a really high attack power value. I mean really high health, uh, which is good on a mechanical pet, but there hasn't really ever been a good high health mechanical pet before, in which you could really, you know, take use of their higher health than normal, uh, because when a pet dies, they come back to life with 20% health for a turn, and usually that's only enough health for them to, like, attack one more time before dying. Uh, having a high health Mechanical pet gives them a much higher chance of surviving an additional turn uh, Since they'll come back with 20% health and that's usually enough to survive an additional basic attack because most basic attacks are Like rounded around doing about 20% damage so that if two pets were attacking each other It would take about five hits for both of them to kill one of them so having a high health on a mechanical pet that has good moves, decoy and alert, uh, can actually give him a little bit more survivability than other decoy users, uh, which makes him a tier one pet. And I mean, there's other decoy users too, like the lifelike mechanical boar who's fast, 325 speed decoy user. He's good, really good, high tier two, but I just can't call him tier one because he doesn't really do anything else well. Pigout's not very good. Rebuild's not very good. Missile is just a standard basic attack. It's not overpowered like Alert, and it doesn't have the options to try to maybe interrupt or do extra damage for two turns. Uh, there's also the Mechanical Axe Beak, who's fast and has Decoy. It also has Haywire and Alpha Strike. That's all really good stuff. But it's a flying-type pet, which means once it goes below 50% health, it's gonna be. It's still pretty fast, actually. Uh, it just doesn't have the survivability of a mechanical type pet, but it's still good. Just high tier two, but it's not gonna be able to beat any of the really good pets. But it'll probably do good against like you know all the other ones. I'm really hesitant to put other decoy users at tier one, uh, but MPD is good enough for tier one, and Alarmabot I think is just good enough to be put on the tier 1 list above the other decoy users because uh, he does a little bit more than just have decoy and uh, I think that's it 
as far as tier one pets go. There's only two mechanical type tier one pets, but there's lots of really good tier two mechanical type pets. It's probably, if I was gonna make a tier two list, mechanicals would have so many on it because, you know, basically every decoy user. <laughs> Uh, plus a whole bunch of other stuff because their racial is so good. Um, okay, so now now that I have all the tier one pets out of the way, uh, there's a lot of them. Let's go into tier one combos. These are combos which are tier one. Like maybe a pets in them aren't tier one on their own, but if you use two abilities combined together, that is like tier one types of damage. Uh, so we've got Kovac, Pheromones, and Dreadful Breath combo. Uh, Kovac is, like, decent on his own. Uh, I have him in 29 teams. He's a good pet, but on his own, he's just not good enough. Uh, but on an AoE team, he's amazing. And that's why I have him like on a tier one combo because on his own he's not good enough. Like in order to be a tier one pet, they have to be good on their own, or they have to support their team very well. Kovac needs support in order to do well. He needs an AOE team. So if you just throw him on an AOE team, he is amazing because of his uh, Poison Fang and Black Claw, Black Claw combo with Pheromones. If your opponent swaps out with Black Claw and Poison Fang and Pheromones is thrown out in the back row, they're going to die. It just does too much damage for them to survive that. Uh, and it's best to use with like a Dreadful Breath, you know, Acid Rain, Dreadful Breath combo, or Weebomination to clean up. Just an AoE team. He needs an AoE team to be viable. On his own, he's just a solid tier 2 pet. Next up, we've got Clone Dance teams. Uh, basically, any pet that uses Ray Dance and any pet that can use Cyclone, that's a tier 1 combo. There are a ton of pets that can use Rain Dance. Jungle Beaks, uh, Jellyfish, Royal Peacock, Left Shark, uh, and Cyclone. There are tons of pets that can use Cyclone. The Fledgling Owl can use Cyclone. Icky can use Cyclone. Uh, there's a couple of dragons that can use Cyclone. See, I have one right here. Uh, one with an overinflated attack power value, they can use Cyclone. If you combine Cyclone with Rain Dance, you have a tier one combo. Usually the best two pets for it are Jade Miss Dancer and Blighthawk, because Blighthawk's the only undead pet who can use Cyclone, and undead pets are really good. But on his own, he's not strong enough to carry a team like all the other tier one pets would be able to do. Jade Miss Dancer, on his own, is actually pretty decent but not tier one material decent, where all the other tier one pets are kind of overpowered and can carry a team they're on. Jade Miss Dancer can't really carry a team, but he's not gonna bring it down either. He's gonna be able to dish out damage and you know hit hard and hit fast because he's pretty fast the SS breed. Uh, I just don't think he's good enough on his own to be tier one, even if he is a counter to some of the strong pets in the meta. Uh, but if used, with a Cyclone user, uh, that's a tier 1 team. It's good against, you know, a pet full of nothing but tier 1 pets. You could probably beat them with a Clone Dance team. It's just it doesn't have to be a Jade Mist Dancer, and it doesn't have to be a Blighthawk. Uh, that's why I can't really put any of these specific pets tier 1. But the combo of Rain Dance and Cyclone is tier 1. It's a ton of AoE damage. Next up, we've got a uh, Call Pack combo. Basically, using Whirlpool or Volcano with the Alteric Brew Pup's Call Pack ability. Call Pack, ever since they nerfed Hal, is the only ability in the game which is able to apply a 100% damage uh, debuff for one turn. That's not absorbed by just, you know, one attack. It's for everything for that turn. Uh, that doesn't lock him into the turn for the ability. I mean, that doesn't lock him into the move. Because there is Stampede that, like, rabbits can use. Uh, but if they use that, they're locked into the move for three turns. And it actually does less damage than normal. 
because it's balanced around the fact that they're going to be doing double damage during the stampede. Whereas Call Pack hits just as hard as a basic attack. Actually, it hits harder. Yeah. It's an overpowered ability now that I think about it. Uh, 325 damage for only having 289 health. I mean attack power. Uh, it's an overpowered ability. It's overinflated, just like Alert uh, with the Alarma bots. Oh, I never really noticed that. Uh, but Call Pack isn't really enough to make him tier 1 because his other abilities are like mediocre. They're okay, but they're nothing great. Good stuff is a decent AoE heal, but it only heals your backline pets. It doesn't heal him as well like Haunting Song does. Tough and Cuddly is basically Crouch. It's good on uh, beast type pets, you know, if you use it when you're low on health. That way you can survive under 50% health longer. But he doesn't really have anything to take advantage of that extra damage, you know, besides Call Pack, which is on a three turn cooldown. And Call Pack is more useful when combined with a hard hitting ability on a timer, like Whirlpool or Volcano. If you use Whirlpool and then swap into the Autark Brew Pup and use Call Pack, your opponent almost cannot dodge the damage unless they know what you're doing, like immediately. And they're able to swap to a pet who has a dodge. Uh, because Call Pack can break Decoy in one turn. It hits three times and it doesn't lock him into the ability and it puts up the debuff. So they'll take the hard hitting Whirlpool or Volcano. Uh, they'll have 100% debuff so you can just attack him again. Or if you have even more dots up, they'll take more damage. Uh, but on his own, he's not good enough. He's decent. I mean, Avalanche is also decent on AoE teams, but MPD is better. He has like a better moveset and he's more versatile and he also has a good hard hitting AoE damage ability. Uh, Avalanche it's a little bit harder though, but Alteric Brew Pup has a little bit more damage, so it's only normal. Uh, but he doesn't have all the other advantages that MPD brings, like a decoy. Uh, so Alteric Brew Pup, Call Pack, is a tier one combo when combined with another pet's hard hitting ability and there's a lot of different things they can do. Now, uh, that's that. Next up we've got minefield swap combos. Uh, pets who can throw out minefield, like Warbot or Rotten Little Helper, these are the two strongest pets with uh, a minefield ability where they throw it out and the damage won't go out until your opponent swaps the pet in. It does about two basic attacks worth of damage. Uh, a little bit less than two basic attacks worth of damage, but it's pretty close, you know, for one damaging ability. Uh, and if you're able to use a pet to swap them out, oh, not this one though. This is this is the slow fiend shimp. Only the SS fiend shimp is the fast one. I mean, is the tier one one. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't have to be a fiend shimp. It can be any pet that swaps them out. Basically, if you're able to force your opponent to swap out. Uh, into a minefield, that's a tier 1 combo. Like, Warbot on his own, he's actually a pretty decent uh, mechanical type pet, but not, you know, super great. That's kind of the problem with a lot of mechanical pets, is they're all like super decent, but none of them, besides like two, are overpowered. They're all pretty balanced, and he's kind of balanced as well. He's a really good pet to use if you're able to uh, combo with his minefield. Rotten Little Helper can also kind of do it as well, but Warbot's better. I just have Rotten Little Helper here because he's he actually has a stronger booby trap presence. It does a tiny bit more damage because he has a tiny bit more attack power, but Warbot's better. Uh, and that's a tier 1 combo. He's not good enough to be tier 1 on his own, but when combined with the swap, it's uh, tier 1 material. And last but not least, we have a combo that I don't have. What's it called? Righteous Inspiration. Uh, Murloc. Here we go. I don't actually have this pet. Uh, the Merkelot, he's like by definition a tier one pet because Righteous Inspiration swapped into a uh, something else is really good, but swapped into an Armageddon 
is even better because it doubles the damage of the ability and gives them a hundred percent more speed so they're guaranteed to go first unless your opponent uses a priority move or something uh, and it's gonna do about 650 damage to your opponent's entire team which is the equivalent of hitting about six times with two turns uh, which is a ton of AoE damage. So the Merc a lot Armageddon combo is a tier one combo but Merc a lot's also tier one on his own because he's such an amazing support pet. He can be used with a lot of other pets to do well because uh, Righteous Inspiration is just a really really good ability. But I don't have him so I wasn't able to really talk about him. He's tier 1, but for like his pure support potential, but he's also decent on his own. But since he has such amazing uh, support with Righteous Inspiration, being the only pet in the game with Righteous Inspiration still, uh, he's tier 1, especially when used in a combo. He's like the definition of like a tier 1 combo. But he's also really hard to get. I don't even have one. I really want one though. Uh, but he's too expensive. So if you're like one of the two people who have it, you have a tier 1 combo potentially. And that's all of the combos I can really think of are just those five. Uh, Kovac with an AoE team, the Clone Dance, uh, a hard hitting Call the Pack combo, Minefield Swap, and Righteous Inspiration. Plus all the tier 1 pets. Those are all the tier 1 pets and tier 1 combos 